All right, wireless communications lab. Let's see what we got in here. Now I and one of my lab assistants have been busily cleaning this lab up over the past few days. So we've already removed power strips from the, the tables and got the soldering station all packed up in boxes here. It was a huge mess on this thing and a huge mess on these tables over here. But hey, a messy lab is a productive lab. But anyway, we've got a, a milling machine. This is an older LPKF model, but it still works. And we got a toolbox down here full of high frequency RF adapters and connectors and cables. There's the vacuum for the milling machine. And on these racks over here, we just got a bunch of miscellaneous parts, surface mount stuff, high frequency stuff, some kind of um, RF absorbing foam here for some experiment, some other miscellaneous equipment that gets used once in a while, but very seldom any of this gets used. Comes in handy sometimes. You got some spectrum analyzers, some network analyzers, and stereo microscope over here. This is an older one. You got a newer one over there on that table. And this cabinet, there's a whole bunch of uh, waveguide stuff up here. And also on the bottom shelf, we got some more waveguide stuff. We got this badass section of high power RF cable, coax. Awesome. Oops. What did I drop? I think I dropped this. That's all right. I caught it with my foot. Put my stick, stuck my foot out here so it wouldn't hit the floor and just bounced right into the cabinet. And let's see, oh yeah, got this box here full of rat's nest of circuit and surface mount boards that were milled out on the milling machine and a whole bunch of little RF modules and amplifiers and splitters and all kinds of good stuff in here. I have no idea what it was for, but it's got some communication stuff on the side of it. There's always some kind of RF experiments going on in here. Like these things, this box, the teacher who specializes in electromagnetic stuff, he does a lot of RF experiments um, in, in which he measures the effects of RF fields on, on simulated human tissue and human fluids, like this square box right here in which he would pass fluid of a certain viscosity and a certain temperature and He's got a thermocouple or a thermistor or something right there. And, and also he applies RF fields, like puts some kind of curly antenna on top here and just shoots the, the RF down in there and sees, you know, what the temperature changes and all that. And, and also he does research involving sensing uh, pressure. Like right now he wants to have some kind of RF system to sense pressure inside someone's cranium. So you don't need to do invasive probing and you if you can just stick a little RF antenna on somebody's head to see if they're swelling up in the brain or something like that then that's certainly a lot better than cutting somebody's head open here's some examples of those little antennas that he uses little spiral things with just an RF connector and a ground plane on the back of it glass containers and stuff for the different fluids that he uses and over by the windows, there's that other microscope I was telling you about. Here's another, oh, that looks just like one of the circuit boards we saw in that big aluminum box. And anyway, we got an HP 8720 network analyzer and computers with special network card inside for hooking up to national instrument stuff. There it is. Just a little breakout box with a bunch of terminals inside here. The cable rack, just like we saw before, is a coat rack, an umbrella holder converted into a cable rack. In this case, I got the, these two by fours sticking out this way instead of a long horizontal plank of wood, just so it fits a little better in between the two tables here. 
There's this huge contraption. I have no idea what this is, but it's got some big fat RF cables on the top and the bottom. So, he, so the teacher has one of his students doing some research with that bunch of computers and some other RF equipment over here. Here we've got a 22 gigahertz spectrum analyzer made by formerly IFR. They have since changed their name to Aeroflex. And we got a bunch of brand new Agilent stuff here. This CXA signal analyzer and another RF signal generator. These two things go together as a pair for doing all kinds of good stuff with them. And here's another RF or uh, Anritsu 10 gigahertz signal generator. We've got this cabinet here full of surface mount parts. Just tons of reels of resistors and capacitors. These were actually donated to us by one of our alumni. They were, you know, somebody working in industry. They were getting rid of a bunch of crap and they said, hey, I think I'll call Penn State and see if they want any of this stuff. So, nope, that one's empty. But anyway, it's always nice to get some of this free stuff. At least it's nice if we can actually use it, and these things certainly do get used. And in addition to RF high frequency stuff, we also do some optics things in here too. Like we've got these big optics plates for mounting special optical stuff on them, like the things you see here. We've got a bunch of polarizing filters and beam splitters and all kinds of stuff that gets mounted on those plates and some more optical stuff in here different like different color filters and polarizing and lenses and stuff and of course the things that get used with all those lenses and filters is lasers so we've got a bunch of class 2 and class 3 lasers some of them can get modulated not that one let me find a modulating one here there we go you can put a microphone input and you can modulate the intensity of the laser light coming out with the audio signal and transmit audio over long distance through the laser beam here's one of those lasers which i have taken apart just to show the inside of it and how a helium neon laser tube works and what it looks like so let me flip it on and look at that awesome stuff so it's about 1500 volts on this end on that if i can point to it without touching it right there that terminal 1500 volts through all the the high voltage transformer and um, voltage multiplier network of course down here on the circuit board and the laser light comes out the other end the ground terminal, the negative part of the tube, is this one right here, that black wire. And that, well that just goes to the circuit board, this outside ground shield right here. Inside the tube it goes through this metal strip going to the, the uh, metal tube inside the, the glass tube right there. And also on the other end where the laser light doesn't really come out, you can see that some of it does actually escape tiny bit of laser light comes out of this one but certainly most of the light is out of this end right here and that's the inside of a helium neon laser 5 milliwatt in class 3b also down here on the floor we've got some more spectrum analyzers and inside these cardboard boxes is a bunch of brand new lasers we got a couple years ago Whoa, ha, ha. look at this bad boy amazingly though this is still only five milliwatt same as all the other lasers that were in the, the cabinet five milliwatt 633 nano, nanometer and one more optics thing something I quickly put together some time ago for the teacher who teaches the optic stuff it's just this plastic bucket here with a tube sticking out the side of it and I got a mirror mounted down there so when you shine a laser light down on the mirror then it goes at a right angle 
and comes out through the tube and if you have the bucket full of water of course and the water coming out nice laminar flow out the tube then you can see how the laser light bounces around within the water stream very nice demonstration of internal reflection so that's a look at our communications lab and some of the stuff within it this is one of our smaller lab spaces but when we move to the new building we're going to have a considerably larger lab room for the communication stuff and even it's going to have an adjoining lab uh, a research lab space that's probably going to be about half the size of this room so lots more space for lots more research see you later